They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. Uh, well, anyway, here we are. Hey, God damn. Yeah. Hey, here we are. Hold on. Before we do that, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Well Read Podcast. Uh, wellreadcomedy.com, W-E-L-L-R-E-D, comedy.com is where you can find out where we're going to be as soon as they open the goddamn world up. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can check out our merch, like our book, The Liberal Redneck Manifesto, Dragging Dixie Out of the Dark, and our album, Well Read Live from Lexington. Also, I would encourage you to check out the sister podcast, of this podcast i've got through the screen door uh drew has into the biscuit and trey has the evening skews so now that all that business is out of the way what's up boys oh, shit you shit. tell us mr man if for anybody who just heard all that shit for the first time i imagine there's going to be at least a few of you this week that was the man you came to see Corey forrester there I don't know uh, about that had a wild week didn't you god international sure superstar who, pretty sure anyone who listens to us regularly knows what we're talking about but Corey uh went plum viral again except this time it wasn't just a picture he took with a caption it was easily stolen this was his face talking so he himself did it which is that's it, very much the preferable way to do it i don't know why you didn't do that then to begin with i know uh, really. i was i was thinking i was like dude that time you went viral with the church picture like why didn't you just be in it like yeah know? and all these other times i've also thought to myself like why did i wait to go viral yeah, you know, yeah i've been wondering that the whole time so many people <laughs> have been telling me for a while you need to make one of them viral videos and i've just been mm -hmm. like no I'm fine, you know, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. But yeah, yeah there's something to it. It's really huh. funny to me, though, because like last week I did a interview with Newsweek over a, <laughs> over a video I did about cheeseburgers. And I thought, you know, that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, this is it. This is a whole other this is a whole other thing. It's very overwhelming and wild. And uh, thanks, everybody, for sharing it. Newsweek cheeseburgers rant CNN. Yeah, it works. Man, I've been. Now. If we could go back about the viral thing, and I hadn't thought of that, maybe mm -hmm. I should do that. It would help. I recommend it uh, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll look. I'll look into it. But I, I got a lot going on this week. Yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, if only to watch for until you realize, hey, I should turn my notifications off to watch your phone go literally insane. It's yeah, crazy. Well, on a personal level, I want to thank you because it gives us something positive to talk about this week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. Like yeah. this is that's the only good in my life I can see. Well, other than some people in my immediate circle are like, God damn, maybe these magas are crazy. Well, and unfortunately, I mean, that's the reason the video did so well. Um, and it and ain't it just the way like I told like first off. When I put up a buttercream dream video, for instance, or ain't later or whatever, I've sat down, I've decided that I've woke up that morning and went, this is what I'm doing today. Then I wrote it. Then I filmed it, edited it, put it up, had a thought process to it. This was not that way at all. This was just like, got mad, hulked out, shot a video, put it up. And then like, as I sat down, Amber, <laughs> Amber goes, um, cause I was fucking up here yelling. She goes, um, are you okay? Like, did you just put something on the internet? And I go, yeah. And honestly, that one will probably do pretty good. Cause it wasn't fucking funny. <laughs> and, <laughs> and ain't that just the way. Yeah, I was wondering I was, if you had that, that thought that I was very comedian th thought. <laughs> I also wanted to ask not just that part, all, everything you just said, like I know again, cause the way comics brains work or whatever. And I've had similar experiences not to the degree that i mean you know when i first went viral and started all this shit it was like that except not it was i wrote that video everybody thought right. i did what you had did but i right. didn't I, I wrote that video like i'd written the rest of them and put you know put them out on purpose but along the way i've put things out that were like very sincere or whatever that did kind of well and i'm and it's all you have this weird comic thought of like 
God damn it. That did so much better than the funny thing yeah. that I yeah. liked that I put out last week. And yeah. I just sort of, ain't that just the way of yeah. it all. And I know overall you're thrilled regardless, but I'm wondering how much of that, how much of that, like, ain't that just the way sort of thing do you have going on where it's like you put all yeah. these effort into all these funny videos, some of which have done very well themselves, but then you just, you just get mad and do this thing. Yeah. And it explodes like the irony of well, it. Well, luckily there's a, there's a couple things different from when your video went viral to my video went viral. Several that I probably couldn't even think of, but the main one that I can think of is I got to watch you go through all that. Yeah. And I got to watch you live it. So like I've known a lot of these things that are about to have like, hey man, don't look at the comments. Hey, you know, just all these things. And uh because of that, another th another advantage that I have on you that's not like you just couldn't that's just how it is, is that how round his face is. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> no it's <laughs> just that when you went viral we didn't have professional clips of us doing stand up. Right, right. You know? Yeah. So I wasn't dude, that it, it that first went that first came from my personal Facebook I page. I didn't even have a fan page. I was completely unprepared. Right. So my point in is every way for that. My, my point is like it was so easy for people to be like, oh look at this random dude that just popped right. off. Yes. It was very the 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 first thing I did whenever this video started taking off I re-uploaded an old clip of my stand-up, a really good professional clip of my stand-up for my special, and put it on there. That way, when people came to my page, they would immediately go, oh, he's a comedian, so that I could mm -hmm. like get ahead of some of that, like, oh, here's this guy that popped off on the internet, and now he's doing comedy. So I've had a lot of advantages, and therefore, the whole ain't that just the way, I think it would have bothered me a lot more had that not been the case, because right now, I'm old enough and mature enough to realize, like, Dude, however you get the eyeballs, you got the eyeballs. And if mm -hmm. that hits for you and you hit for them, there's a good chance this will hit for them too. And now I just got a better chance. So like, you know, I don't know. You can't. Uh, what video's I, pinned? What's that? Did you change your pinned video? What video's pinned? No, my, my pinned video is my cameo. So daddy can pay his mortgage. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a funny cameo, right? Or yeah, is it just yeah. you saying that you're on cameo? Uh, we actually, yeah, you're right. I probably need to pin the actual, an actual cameo video, but. Um, I was no, just asking. I don't know what you need to do. I have no experience. I was just curious if you've done something with yeah. that. No, but it's, it's been, it's been wild, man. Like, um, it, what I've clip been, did you use? Let me guess. Civil War. I would have went with Civil War. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was going to say. I would have went with Civil War. Uh, I mean, I, I just Googled Corey Forster live at Bijou, and that was the clip that came up. But um, so, oh, shit. The crazy thing to me was, though, and this may be like how the sausage made, and if if so, we'll move on. But, like, I've had videos that – now, I damn sure ain't had a video get – like, between mine and Leslie Jones that she took off mine, it's got, like, almost, like, 7 million views or something like that. But I've had some buttercream dream videos and other rants that have gotten like half a meal or whatever, and I've gained followers from them. But like, yeah. dog, not like this shit. Right. Buddy. I went. I went from I had fifty thousand followers two days ago, and I have a hundred and twenty thousand right now. Like that's insane. You got me fifteen hundred from people tagging me and Trey in it. That's uh, <laughs> one of my John Kyle's got half a million views, and it got me three thousand. You got me half the followers I got from a tiny viral video by people just being like, these are his friends. Yeah. That's what Matt Coon told me today that just because I was, we were mentioned in the same tweets that he was just getting there. Like, Oh, that's his producer. Cool. So like, again, it's wild. I'm sure there's some of y'all that may be joining this podcast for the first time. And you might be like, you know what? I think I just like that video dog Peace. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. But I hope some of them hang on. I mean, yeah, that, well, that'll definitely happen. You know, that happens all the time with anything like that. But I think, but, I, but, uh, what are you, have you even thought about like going forward? Do you feel at all obligated or whatever to try to replicate the type of thing that was? I, and I don't mean the experience because everybody knows you can't replicate something I'm, like this or plan for it, but like, doing what you did again or do you feel like oh well, obviously i gotta keep doing that yeah you know, no. i'm still doing liberal redneck videos five years later <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 right but like no and here's why because a like i'm sure that 
Okay, so like, you know, you said like, mine was the opposite. They thought I was just screaming at it, but I'd actually written it out. I bet you right. there's some people that feel the opposite about mine because mine was very genuine. Like, you can almost hear me crying in it. They're like, he prepared this, he wrote those lines, yada, yada, yada. Because you can't replicate that. Like, now, for the record, it's not like that's the first time I've ever just gotten mad and screamed right. into my phone. That happens sometimes where like, I just feel like, I don't even feel like writing anything. I just need to let the world know I'm mad. So obviously- Isn't that the first buttercream dream you just happen yeah. to have the belt over your yes. shoulder? The first buttercream dream, I got mad about people not understanding what freedom of speech was. I was walking outside. I had my shirt off anyways, and I just saw the belt, and I just put it over my shoulder. I didn't even address it. And that's to me, that's why it got so many views, because people just saw this shiny belt and were like, what is this shit? And so then that became the thing. But to me, this may be stupid, but it is what I'm going to do. I've been busting my ass the whole pandemic to create new characters and put out cool videos, my new podcast, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm just going to still keep doing that. And if people end up going, hey, I was only here for the Scream Boy, then they're going to leave anyways. And obviously, if something ever makes me mad, I'll probably do that again. But that's the thing that that particular video you can't replicate because that was just very much real and very much how I felt. And anyone can see it coming a mile away when you're putting that on you know what i mean that's what i was gonna say if you try to replicate that man it'll it'll it'll, it'll be it won't embarrassing but i maybe would, like, I would, at the very least it'll just not work right but again like my thing is like yeah. good all these people are here now now i would like them to enjoy the stuff that i actually write and create my funny stuff and i'm sure i'll have some people that eventually get bored with that but like to me i'm just appreciative of the new followers and i i because I have an ego, I'm a comedian. I'm I know that they'll keep blocking me because my shit hits. So to I, me, stick with the plan. I want to say, give my man credit. I laughed very hard when you got out of breath. So I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad. It's funny because uh, the only people that shared the clip and wrote like L A M A O or this is hilarious were like comedians <laughs> that were like this is hilarious and like really it's it's the you know least funny thing I've done but uh, yeah man I don't know just uh, I I feel like even though you can't uh, that was so much luck like that's what a viral video is is luck always you, yeah it, it's luck but 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 but. The reason that I was even conditioned to be doing a video is because I've been getting in front of the camera and been doing stuff. So like, yep. yeah, uh, the lottery's luck, but you got to buy a ticket. And I well, bought a lot of tickets. And you've probably gotten, I don't know how many new followers from being the buttercream dream who are new followers who are into you, who are eating your shit up. So yeah. they saw that and shared the fuck out of it. You know what I mean? They helped yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, again, like, I think that the reason that I've been put in the situation to be making good videos and be creatively fruitful over the past couple months is because I got healthy. I'm living a better lifestyle. And so to me, I'm just not going to change any of that and just keep going. And just, you have to know that, Hey, every video is not going to get 7 million views. You know, what's You're funny about what you just said. I was, it's another thing I wanted to bring up on here. Um, Right before I went viral in April 2016. I know what you're about to say. Preceding four months prior to that, from January to April 2016, me and you, Corey, had done the weight loss competition slash blog down, down flabby. flabby. Uh, and in doing so, I had lost a bunch of weight. And for the first time in my adult life, I had completely stopped drinking. Yep. I, had, I had quit drinking for four months. And I had gotten in pretty good shape. I had my shirt off in that video, yada yada. Shoulders I didn't even hitting. I didn't even think about none of that. Um, I really truly didn't. But Thompson, our buddy Thompson, friend of the podcast, for all you new listeners, Thompson's my best friend from growing up and also our biggest critic. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but we realize anyway, yeah, it, no, he just he both uh, loves us and thinks we're ridiculous and he sits in clay county tennessee laughing at how stupid we are so anyway that's thompson thompson at that time told me and it's the first time it ever crossed my mind he was like like a couple months into or whatever he told me he was like you know i realized that you've been you had been doing like stand up and you're trying doing the comedy thing for a while and everything he's like and i know it wasn't like going bad but then he's like i just think it's it's wild that right after you stopped drinking and got your you know shit together from a health perspective he's like i just think it's wild that right after you did that for the first time 
you immediately exploded or whatever. Right. And in my and and in my head at the time, and also not just at the time, ever since then, because of course I went right back to drinking. We went on tour immediately. I got drunk and fucked, living like a rock star the whole time, regained all that weight. But anyway, mm -hmm. and I kept, you know, I've maintained a career ever since then. And I've been, you know, I've drank off and on, but not to any kind of problematic degree. So I even the whole time and even now i have thought like huh yeah i don't know i'm skeptical that that actually had anything to do with it that it was that i still think it was just like a coincidence but that also has happened with you and, and you hear and you <laughs> like, hear it and, and so you i don't know it. You hear I, right it from, yeah you hear it from so many comedians now a lot of times it's like you know, as soon as I got sober, I started doing better. And it was like someone who was a raging alcoholic, which of right. course was holding them back. Right. But like, I've heard it several times from people who were just like, yeah, my thing was I just stopped drinking at the clubs. I cut back on drinking. And realistically to me, like, it's very simple. It just adds hours to my day. Period. Yeah, you don't feel like shit. It, so I don't, you're more productive. Yeah. Like, while I'm drinking, I'm not saying that you can't create good stuff while you're drinking. Of course you can. Like Hemingway, right? You know, right drunk, uh, edit sober. Of course you can. But like, for the most part, you're throwing away most of that shit when you're drunk. So like, that's wasted time being drunk. And then the next day, I'm not doing a goddamn thing because I'm so hungover. And then the next day, maybe I'm not still hungover, but my endorphins are so gone that I don't have any creative juices at least. So like, you get one good drunk, that's possibly three days that you just can't do really shit because creative, as you know, it's not like you can just sit, it's not like a nine to five thing where you just go, okay, I will be creative right now. You know, like that's not how it goes. Yeah, so and we, me, we should say, it's helped. We should say, cause I keep thinking about all these hypothetical brand new listeners we have this week, but I'm sure there's at least a few. We should say Corey was not, Corey was not like a full blown alcoholic who recently no. went to rehab and cleaned up. And that's no. what we're talking about. He just, uh, no, I like wasn't healthy. drink and he was a good old boy. Yeah. And he lived wrong. Me and him both live wrong. And he just recently stopped drinking. Uh, yeah, but, this wasn't uh, except order. for every three weeks or so. He likes to reset, which is what he calls Haven't getting done drunk it, though. on good time. <laughs> Haven't done it though. I skipped my last yeah. two. That's the thing because, and I told been you, been nine weeks. Uh, well, no, I know it ain't been nine weeks. It's been I, the last time I got drunk was the Mike Tyson fight, November twenty eighth. Damn. So I'm like seven. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, but what I'm saying is time. like. I didn't purposefully like go skip the reset. Like I forgot that it was even due because I don't care. And like, I, like I considered drinking on new year's and then I, like I even went and picked up booze and just didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just, I've been, I, and I'm, I definitely know like, dude, again, the first time we're all able to hang out, uh, I know what's going to happen. I'm want to, I'm going to want to have a beer. So it's not like I'm saying like, I'm never drinking again. I know I will, but like, it just hasn't, it's just not blowing my skirt up. Like I'm genuinely, and I know this won't be hard for y'all to understand. I've replaced my like addiction and my habit. My addiction is like making good shit, like making good videos and uh, working on my podcast and like having the energy to do it. And also I fucking walk three and a half hours a day, like a manic lunatic. So it's just, uh, yeah, I've just replaced my addictions is all I've done. I've been drinking these at night and it's helping me not drink sometimes. That's it. Uh, I guess not everybody's watching. They're called Zenify. It's just like a chill out drink. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, what do you, uh, is, is it time to shift to the bad stuff? No, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. We just had a <laughs> dead spot there, which didn't hit. I mean, sure. Hell uh, yeah. I mean, people should know, uh, what it is we normally do, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify what I think you're about to do is what we normally do. We, I, we it's normally not, talk about, uh, silly shit. I a think lot it's of just times, like, but. just like with my video, like that type of video is not what I normally do, but every now and then it does happen. And obviously we're going to talk about it on here, but yeah, Drew, if you want to bring us down, go ahead. <laughs> I don't, uh, but I will. Okay. Uh, we had a goddamn insurrection. Oh, right. That I thought you were talking, I thought you were talking about the fucking Titans game. <laughs> are you serious i knew no, what he was talking bad. about i would much 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 rather talk about the insurrection than the titans game me too uh <laughs> easily far and away by a mile um yeah i okay i all right listen yes let's yes let's talk about it for a minute Corey got real mad about it that day that was the subject of the rant uh itself 
I put out one of, I put out a liberal redneck video on the subject where I was mostly made, and there's been plenty of that too, plenty of making fun of it, but that's what I want to bring up. Like, I know, I know that it is a wild ass and unsettling and disturbing and upsetting thing <laughs> to have happened. Yeah. I know that, but I still am falling mostly on the side of, it has not changed how I feel about these people is what I'm trying to say. Right. Meaning like, it ain't like they really fucking accomplished. They still came off as like dipshits at the end of the day, well, like incompetent dipshits in my opinion. Like, I feel like this is, we've been saying the whole time. I don't know how many times I've said people bring up the idea of like, what, what are they going to do if he loses? And the whole time I've said it, and I hope I don't end up eating these words still, but I've been like, I'm not worried about what they're going to do. Cause like, they don't do anything well. Like they just, they just don't. And then I feel like this, this to me kind of proves it. I know they got right. all the way into the Capitol building, but then did what? Took right. a bunch of dumbass self-incriminating pictures. And now the FBI is rounding them all up and, they didn't change anything like so i well, i don't everyone, know i'm not that worried talking. in the aftermath personally i see a bunch of people making the um comparison they're like well hitler had a failed coup attempt and then 10 years later he was in power and i'm like all right but like who's the hitler in this situation right. Like Trump, Donald like, Trump ain't living 10 more years he ain't surely. living 10 more years and also he's not going to get reelected like that there's no way that's so unprecedented. That's that's not been a thing where someone wins, loses, comes back. Like it's now, not uh, gonna Grover happen. Cleveland did that, which I've always oh, thought word. was weird. Grover Cleveland. Oh, I don't know anything else about Grover Cleveland, but I know that he did he, what so, you just said. He really? won, lost, and then came back and won again. Actually, okay. you know what? The loss, the loss might not even be part of it. I don't know the story. That's how history dumb I am. I know right. that he served a term, someone else served. Grover Cleveland came back, served another term. He may have chosen not to run right. for re-election for whatever reason. That's and then just came hard. Back. I don't know. That's but really I don't, hard to imagine. But also, they're trying to impeach him right now for the second time, right. which they should. And my understanding is if that actually, if they get off their ass and push that through, yeah, which they run. won't. But if they did, if they did, then yeah, he's not able to even run again anyway. Yeah. So, but and also, it, how old? He's like 70, what, 76 or something Yeah, like that. he's only like one year younger than Biden or some shit. And he's not in good shape. No. He's like... So, I don't know. Well, like, dude, like, he, yeah, and the impeachment's very important, too, because I know I kind of flippantly, like an idiot, was like, oh, yeah, we're going to do it right here at the end. But, like, A, what you just said is true. He's unable to run again. B, it, uh, he doesn't get his pension, which, fuck him, he don't deserve nothing. And also, he don't get secret, uh, secret service details. So, like, would hit. Yeah. But, so, I'm just saying, the coup... I think most people feel like, oh, this coup was both comical and horrifying. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I agree with that, but I'm not I'm not having existential panics over this at all, me personally. Can I, uh, can I just be me and go the opposite route Yeah, now? of course. Yeah. I mean, I've known that's where this is going to go, but yeah, please. Well, Scare first me. of all, there's nothing that says he can't run again. It if he gets on... impeached. I've if seen, he's impeached. I... I, I mean, it, I, in peace, it, I think first of all, we'd be, have to we'd have to win the impeachment. He'd yeah, I know, and I don't think that you know, that I don't think that'll happen either. But that I'm saying, if they actually did that, that would <clears throat> preclude him from running. It again. depends on the crime, but it depends on the crime. That's my. I was reading about it earlier. It depends on what he gets impeached for. But there's nothing. There's not. There's nothing in the Constitution that says if you get impeached, you can't be president. But if it's treason, you know, or or in, there's certain like yeah. you know what I mean. So I mean, you you you're probably right. Well, but that was just my first quick comment. Also, like, I'm not saying he won't be alive in four years, but he will definitely not be good enough to run. To there's be no clear, point. I think we should kill him. Yeah. And I mean legally. <laughs> I mean, legally, and I think it would be the best thing for this country, genuinely, because he has united a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have been united. Here's my, I guess, counter to what you said. I didn't disagree with anything you said. I've been laughing at them. I made fun of them immediately and got some flack for it. I think they're fucking dumb. But the way I express it is... Not every person who stormed that Capitol was like a right-wing, militant, open white supremacist douchebag. 
but every right wing open white open white supremacist douchebag saw that saw the police let them in some of the gates saw right. the senators encouraging it saw the president inside it and that doesn't make me think they're going to take over our government they're not it makes me think that violence is going to erupt over the next two to three weeks and people are going to die it makes me think or worry that our fbi and our police forces have been more indoctrinated in this weird maga QAnon cult than i realized and that that is going to lead to more violence and pain over the next couple months or couple years my only, i don't uh, i don't think a civil war is coming necessarily but you know the cue boards and eight chan and all that is lit up right now with people saying that they're planning attacking every fucking capital every single state capital now are they going to be dipshits yeah but like more people are going to die and again people who are better prepared are going to have been emboldened by this. There is no way that's not true. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. My only saving grace on that is like, it's not like these people didn't have these ideas during the Obama administration. I know because I just heard it all the time. It's just that the Trump administration did embolden them. I'm, I'm saying like, I feel like because he's still in power, they feel like we've got this get out of jail free card. But and I'm not saying right as soon as Biden takes over, it'll be different. But I do think there's going to be at least an air of difference. Like, hey, um, the, our team, it's not a home game right now. You know what they're, I'm saying? They're being, and I know there's like 80,000 people there or whatever. And so, and a ton of them have not. But all the ones that like, you know, went viral in pictures and stuff like that have been arrested by the FBI. And I saw right. the FBI is Thank considering... God federal murder charges for the people involved with what happened in that cop. That's the other thing. Yes, there were cops just letting them in, but one of those cops got beat to death by the right. mob. And uh, so I feel like maybe next time, maybe they won't just let them in uh, and worries that they too would get beaten to death like their uh, compatriot did. But anyway, I'm just saying they're actually fa right now. There's 10 days left in the Trump administration and they're facing accountability they're facing consequences for what right. they did they didn't just that. like get away with it and um I, yeah so i don't and also if but if like they, what about in Corey's area you know like dj was telling me today that they're having some kind of rally up in wallaceville you know i don't know who that sheriff is i don't even know where wallaceville is but like are they gonna get arrested and if they don't who are they gonna like I'm not. I'm not uh, terrified that they're going to take that like Donald Trump's going to remain president and be a dictator. I feel pretty certain more violence is on the way. Number one. Number two. I think they've already changed history, though. They don't have to um, keep <clears throat> Donald Trump as president to change history. I think Patriot Act Two is coming. I think that we now are going to have a situation where a bunch of otherwise progressive or liberal people are clamoring for the FBI to do something about these people. And that's going to lead to the Patriot Act too. I, and we're just going to crawl further down that hole of, I, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's a dark day in my opinion. Well, just I mean, not, I, just not because Donald Trump's going to remain president. He won't, but it's already dark in my opinion. I mean, I agree with you. And also to talk about what you were talking about, Wallaceville uh, is, it's a, um, oh, what do they call them? It's, uh, God damn it. When something ain't a town, but it's got a name unincorporated. Uh, unincorporated. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's between, uh, my house now and where I used to live. And it is the predominantly <laughs> black area of this area. So that will be some shit. And I really hope that that's not true. The DJ claims it's true, like that he, I don't know if he said he saw it or he heard about it, but all I'm saying is that's already a nightmare. Right. So, well, so that's what I'm worried about. I don't have fears about our government being toppled, but I do have fears about our government taking this, you know, as the same excuse they took 9 11 and, and, and making our world a little shittier. Yeah. And I mean, the revolt. Yeah. I mean, like the backlash on that is going to, cause I, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but like, it's already like, oh, my rights, my rights, my rights, my free. They're banning me from Twitter. They're taking my gun. And like, yeah, any tinkering of that whatsoever, just for the, like, that ain't going to be good. But I have to just believe that once Biden, again, no president can change anything, especially right off the bat. 
But like once it's not a fucking home game for them, I think shit will change a little bit. I, there's Look, another thing that I think it hasn't been mentioned yet that I believe will be a factor. And yes, I'm being, you know, the optimist in this conversation. And that is that like, I think you could tell those people, a lot of them, and then like the clips you saw or whatever, or hearing them talk. I think a lot of those people genuinely, truly believed that they were like being heroes and right. that they would be like, cheered on in these efforts to do the right thing and that did that's not what happened like i, I mean I, I here's how you could tell a lot of just like regular conservatives or you know other republicans and stuff were not down with that and you mm -hmm. could tell because they started saying oh well, that really wasn't even that was the left is what that was that was antifa which is fucking stupid and ridiculous and shitty and can't let them get but, away with that. But I'm just saying it illustrates that they weren't on board with it. And yeah. I think those people that went there that day, I don't think they were expecting that. I think it goes beyond just, they weren't, they clearly weren't expecting any consequences, but I think it goes just beyond that. I think they were expecting to be like lauded. Yes. Like carried like out it, on people's shoulders. And yeah. Shit. Like Star and now Wars. They're, the and end. now they're being arrested by the FBI and charged with federal murder and stuff like that. Not, it didn't go the way they thought it would go. And, and that absolutely and that will have an effect on it too. I agree. Yeah. An effect for, it will. From, from their perspective. I mean, I think it'll split them. <clears throat> I think that it'll, it'll take a lot of them and make them go, what the fuck? I'm out. And then right. it'll take the it'll take a portion of them, and they'll go see. It's deep state. Right. They're all against us, and I mean, you know, you probably saw pictures of people in Dalton, Georgia, lining up outside of an academy of sports before it opened, so they could get guns and ammunition. And those weren't, in my opinion and in my heart, those weren't people who were like, I can't wait to go shoot a black person. Those were people who were like, God damn, it's on. Everyone's fucking thinking that it's on right now. And that yeah, feeling yeah. alone is a powder keg, in my opinion. And then the other thing, I mean, Donald Trump put people in the National Guard. He got rid of people and he put people who were loyalists in. Seemingly so he could he could keep them from coming in quickly. And I'm saying that all that has already changed America. There's only two ways to go from there. Either that's the blueprint for the next person <laughs> to fuck us or, you know, our FBI, whoever reacts to that appropriately and tries to change it. But every single time we ask them <laughs> to fix something, they fuck something else up. It, it's a bad day is all I'm saying. It's, it's definitely a bad day. I'm not trying to argue that it's not a bad day. I'm just trying to have the uh, – everybody, I think, is split on – how they feel about the prognosis or the outlook or whatever in the aftermath of that bad day. And I'm on the more optim optimistic end of that spectrum is what I'm saying. Um, part of that is me just, you know, choosing to be or telling myself to be or whatever. But, you know, I think there's legitimate arguments uh, to be made. Did just you see that the Dow hope. Did you see that there, like a lot of companies are pulling their, um, uh, support for any candidates that wouldn't uh, validate the vote. They're suspending their campaign payments unless they validate the vote. Alt. Yeah. Well, and right. And that, yes. My, I know, and I also saw like the national association of manufacturing companies or something like that. Just a bunch of like big, like factory companies, people that make shit collectively sent a letter to mike pence asking him to remove donald trump and you know uh whatever yes and money talks it always has Absolutely. i mean those are the people those are their masters you know right ultimately are those that scares people. me so why does that scare you i feel like that's because because they wouldn't do that for a moral reason they're worried they're worried if this doesn't happen that oh. we're going to have more problems that the economy is going to falter yeah like right. the fact that but, they're reacting makes me think that this is serious yes right i hear you on that but i be think them re them doing something will like be effective is what i'm saying because they listen to them you know uh, yeah they're owned i mean that's a dark right. thought in and of itself that I, our, yes that's also, lie that's within also amazon true. but but i know what no. you mean i guess i think we agree about most things i guess the difference is this in a year i think joe biden's president and unfortunately, a bunch of fucking people died in a pandemic and we're back to not giving a fuck about black people uh, as a country, mostly. But within that year, 
I think a lot more people die. I think there's a lot of violence. And I think the FBI uses all that violence and cops <laughs> use all that violence as a reason to become even more militarized and <clears throat> arrest more Black Lives Matter protesters as one example of what they'll do. Mm. Well, listen, y'all out there, if you're freaked the fuck out by all this, you yep. know what you should do, Corey? You should uh, check out Talk Space. That's yep. what you should do. Um, because right now, if you're feeling overwhelmed with everything, that's because you're human. There's a lot to be anxious about right now, right? A whole Red. lot. Got to take care of our mental health and work through these emotions with a licensed therapist. And you can do that with Talkspace. Talkspace is making therapy affordable and accessible for all because we all need extra support to feel our best. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more, all the classics. No matter what, Talkspace will find you the right therapist to help you achieve your goals. That's right. It's affordable. It's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy, which is obviously helpful. Everyone's struggling right now. So instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited text messages to your therapist 24-7, and they will engage with you daily, five days a week. And now Talkspace covers 40 million people for online therapy Damn. through insurance or their employer. So you can find out if you're eligible at Talkspace.com slash insurance. So if you're lucky to have insurance, uh, that's a, they're, they're going to hook you up. Yep. Talking to my friends is very different from talking to a licensed therapist who has the expertise and knowledge to give me practical guidance. Talkspace gives us the support we need at an affordable price. And as a listener of this podcast, you can get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com or download the app and make sure you use that promo code WELLRED. And again, for all you new listeners, it's WELL, R-E-D. It's, you get it. It's Joe, Well Redneck. You get it. Anyway, make sure you use the promo code WELLRED to get $100 off your first month, $100 off, and show your support for this show, which we appreciate. That's Well Red, Well R-E-D, and Talkspace.com. We thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Joe, yeah. who, who else is, are well, we thanking? I tell you what, it's uh, it's hard out there right now. You know what else is hard? My dick whenever yes. I take a blue chew. Let's talk That's about right. something we could use more of, ladies and gentlemen, and friends beyond the binary sex. Great sex. Guys, you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed, that little oomph in bed. Listen up. BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue. It brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-improved Active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Blue Chew is made in the USA. It's prescribed online by a licensed physician, so you don't even have to go to the goddamn doctor or wait in line and see the girl that's now a farm tech that you went to high school with, and it's a whole thing. You don't have to do it. It's cheaper than the pharmacy. They prepare and ship right to you in a discreet package. No awkwardness. Also, you can take them on a full stomach, because who don't like to have chicken nuggets and fuck? It's great. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment for free. What the fuck are you saying? That's right. It's free. When you use our special promo code RED, R-E-D, you just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code RED to try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper choice, and we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, you know what you need to do, guys? Get you a new dick. Get you a new dick. That's right. So That's listen, here's, it off. We got one. We got one more for you, because uh, it's tough times right now. People react to them differently. What can you do? You can get a therapist with talk spikes. What can you do? You can get your dick hard with blue chew, mm -hmm. or you can do what me and I know my man Corey. What we love to do mm. and stuff your face to feel Woo! better. And one of the best ways, most uh, in, enriching and um, <clears throat> satisfactory ways to go about that is by using Hello Fresh. In my experience. Um, HelloFresh is awesome. I've had, I've gotten HelloFresh for, I don't even know now, probably like three years because I, I got it and I never looked back. Yeah. They send you what you pick out your meals that you want every week. They send you everything you need to make those meals and the recipes. It's simple. Anybody could do it. It keeps you from wasting food. It keeps you from having to spend time thinking about what you want to eat or to cook that week. You don't have to worry about it, but then you still get the experience of cooking it yourself, which I, hits for me, me and too. always has. Uh, so I cannot recommend Hello HelloFresh highly enough. And what you could do is you could go to HelloFresh.com slash 80 red. That's eight zero red and use the code eight zero red and you'll get $80 off, $80 off, Phew. including free shipping. It's a HelloFresh.com slash eight zero red. Use the code eight zero red and get $80 off and free shipping. Cho, what hits for you? 
It hits for me so hard. In fact, I just today we record these podcasts on Monday, and that is the day that my HelloFresh box comes, and it is one of my favorite days of the week because, as you said, uh, you pre-pick the meals. But I'm a very forgetful person, so I know when I pick them out that it hits for me, and then I've already forgot by the time I go get them. So I open up the box, and it's like Christmas morning. Last week, uh, I think it was last week, I had the duck a la orange for the first time, and it was wrong. tremendous. And something that they haven't told us to tell you, but I'm going to tell you, because as Trey said, you get to cook it yourself, which hits for us. Here's something that it really did for our family. All right. <laughs> My wife used to just think she could not cook. She was just like, I had to cook. And for the record, when I say I had to cook, I love cooking, but I would cook. And she's like, well, it's just I'm not good at it like you. We had HelloFresh. And then I was on the road and uh, she had been cooking and she's like, Hey, this HelloFresh, you know, I can cook now. And I was like, well, yeah, baby, because you can cook. And she goes, well, I'm just, no, I can't cook. It's just that I'm just doing what it says. And I'm like, that's a recipe. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. right. so guys, uh, if you're out there and you think maybe, hey, I'm not that good a cook, but honestly, you would like to uh, practice that. I think it'd be good for that too. Try it out just to see. Yeah. You'll learn it. It, Cause it's taught me a lot of like things that I would have never yep. thought. Like, I don't know about you, Trey, but like, I stay zesting lemons, even if I'm Absolutely. not using, yeah. even yeah, if I'm buddy. not using Hello Fresh. Like, I bought a zester, like yeah, just a specialized tool yes. that only is for zesting fruit. I bought it, one. Is of it those the long because one? Of this, yes, the long yeah, one. Yeah. They hit so hard. They do hit. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's another thing that, like, that again, it's not there for us to tell you about. But like, I th it teaches you a lot of basic skills that maybe you didn't have. So yeah, because yeah. it's easy and stress free, and that's the whole one of the whole points of it is that it's easy. They bring it right to your door, no contact delivery. You got your meal already planned out. How, how stress-free is that? Uh, there's a variety. They got fresh, high-quality, pre-portioned ingredients, so you can make meals that are delicious and nutritious. And it's flexible. You can change your delivery days or meal preferences or skip a week. So one week, you might be like, I'm the fucking cho this week. We're yeah. going all in. Give yeah. me the meat, baby. Bring it on. Stuff my face. The next week, you might be like me, convincing yourself you're going to change your lifestyle. You know you're not going to, but you're going to try it for this week. Let's mm -hmm. go with more protein. You know what I mean? Cut the carbs. They got all that for you. It's flexible. It's sustainable. And it's easy, guys. What more could you want? Not That's much. Right. So go, go to HelloFresh.com slash 80RED. Use the promo code 80RED and make a hit. We thank all three of them for sponsoring the podcast this week. Hell of a week to do it. Y'all really lucked out, I believe. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. And, yeah, and the audience lucks out every week. Well, back to it. Um, I had a, you know, I, I keep my list of little random topics I think would be interest, interesting to talk to y'all about. And I have one if y'all are ready to move on from the apocalypse or, you know. Oh, I mean, I'm always... I'm always ready to move on from the apocalypse because yeah, I think once we hit the sponsors, you know, it's the apocalypse yeah, right. sponsored yes. by HelloFresh. Right. Well, uh, so this is something every comic just knows to be true, but it's something I don't think we've talked about on the podcast before. And I know sometimes it's like the whole dissecting a frog theory of talking about why things are funny, but this is also related to Corey's experience this past week mm -hmm. and mine with my viral videos. And that's the principle of, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Yeah. Right. Uh, which everybody's aware of. It's like, you know, and it's some certain, so like Corey, part, part of why Corey's ran hit the way it did for people, I guarantee you, is because yeah. he sounds like what people envision it's, the dudes it's a bad at the read. Capitol sounding like. Right. Yeah. It would have been a bad read. <laughs> right. And um, so how you say things is a huge part of how they come across. And even m me as a comedian, knowing that and understanding that sometimes I'm just like, I hear something and I'm like, why, why is that so goddamn funny to me? And here's an example that prompted this whole thing. I know y'all both know it and love it. I quote it all the time. I probably have quoted this on the podcast for, but I'm gonna do it again. Cousin Eddie in fucking Christmas vacation, <laughs> right? He has a million banger fucking lines in that movie me and Corey talked about before like he don't show up for like the first 40 minutes of the movie or 42. something 42 42 first 42 minutes of the movie cousin eddie free but when he shows up he comes out slinging <laughs> hate boy no character has ever been introduced in a more fucking just fastball after fastball fashion mm -mm. than cousin eddie in that movie i don't think but he says so many goddamn funny things my but my personal favorite though has all pretty much always been or has been for years the following he's uh -huh. talking about his kids and what they're up to his older kids and he said he says the older boys uh 
pursuing his career and clark goes ah college he goes no carnival uh <laughs> He's like, and he, I know what you're goes, about to say. It, it's the fa- it's the last the last line of what yeah. I'm about to say is my favorite line of the whole movie. But he goes, "No carnival, yeah, I got him. Uh, right now they got him spreading spreading pixie dust on a tilt a whirl. He's hoping if he maybe next season work his way up to guessing people's weight or <clears throat> barking for the yak woman. You ever see her? She got these big horn, yeah, ugliest sin, but a sweet gal." And a hell of a good cook. cook. (laughs) And that's my favorite line he has in the whole movie. That last one, she ugliest sin, but a sweet gal and a hell of a good cook. And like, I was just thinking about that line the other day. I probably think about that line once a week for the past 30 years or whatever. I I, I just love it so much. And the other day I was thinking like, I don't even know why. I don't know. It's just so perfect. Like he has so many lines in that movie that are, they're jokes. They were written as jokes and they're very funny but that one just like that just it's, seems like a what that real person would say right. uh, in that situation. That joke, that joke is funny because it's a it's a character driven joke. Like right. that, that that on the page isn't funny. There's plenty of stuff that cousin Eddie says that on the page is funny. Right. Like, you know, falls down a well, eyes go cross, kicked by a mule, they go back. I don't know. Like don't that know. on the that on the page is funny, but and a hell of a good cook is only funny because we have already like we've just been introduced to Eddie and they have laid out so much character fucking detail that we know this guy. And therefore that line works coming out of his mouth where it wouldn't come out of Clark. Cause I've just heard I mean, you know how many times I've heard my dad describe an unfortunate looking woman as a great cook. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it ain't zero. <laughs> I take she can cook though, and I'm like, what was the first part? We didn't. <laughs> I uh, Andy and I have an inside joke. We were stoned one night. None of us remembers the context, but now we just say to each other, and in our minds, it's an old lady smoking, mad as hell, going. He told me he was a pharaoh. No clue what it means. <laughs> no clue what the context would be. Um, I, I don't know if this counts. I'm going to reference our own work, gentlemen. I was going to bring this up too, actually. Go ahead. The best I've ever felt related to comedy, not on stage, was when Pete, uh, our, our good buddy Pete, delivered the line at the end of the oh. Accent Problems sketch. Now, that might have read kind of funny on the page, but I don't know because I had to fight for it. I think y'all got it, but I don't think our overlords at Comedy Central got it. And I know the director was confused about it, and she's hilarious. And then when he, and he wasn't confused at all, and when he hit it, I felt chills go through my body because he hit the line exactly as I heard it in my head. And the line, for those of you who I didn't mean to bury the lead here, is uh, this dude's being racist, uh, telling us racist jokes, thinking that we'll like it because of our accent. It turns out we don't. That's the way of the sketch. And at the end, a hot chick comes up to him and thinks that he's not the racist, that we were the racist. And he goes, yeah, those guys, I was trying to tell them about the blacks and how the lives matter. <laughs> it was money. <laughs> the whole, like everyone had to stifle a laugh and it was like, it worked and it felt like magic and the character and Pete got it. And then also it was like on our part, I felt like some validation of like, we try to fight for this joke. We told yeah. y'all. See, I, to I know put, I, to put Pete over a little bit, a lot. Cause I love Pete, but dude, he murdered that role. Absolutely. So like, He's a great dude, was kill, he was killing me the whole like, goddamn time. He was fucking murdering that when he goes, hey, come on, guys, you hadn't even heard the one about the Port- how the Puerto Ricans can't tap dance. <laughs> like, but he you ad-libbed. Fucking, God, he, yeah. yeah, he just smashed, man. He was so great. Uh, um, yeah, Pete Ravello on Twitter, at Pete Ravello, and he does characters. He just put one out about a woke priest, and it's so goddamn funny. <laughs> um, yeah, we what i was going to bring up a different thing related to our work but I, we're very well I, th- I feel like we are affected by this whole principle more than most because how many times have we had the, com- the discussion about things like when we've written pilot scripts or whatever with jokes or whatnot where it's like you you gotta, you gotta hear, hear it me, though yeah. like you like you were times. just saying like if you just like with a 
Paige character, my little sister character, or something like that. So many of her lines on there. It's like I know we hear them. We hear like Paige say it in our heads. We're like, God damn, that's funny. But again, if you just read it, it yeah. won't necessarily seem that funny. And I've always worried about that shit with scripts because it's like when these I do too decadives read them or whatever. I know they're not. I I, I want to just like <laughs> I want to give like little footnotes to every yeah. joke or something. It's like please God, just well, please imagine this in this way, which is also related to space king of footnotes and we wrote our book yeah hey, we, had to. we wrote a book a liberal redneck manifesto dragon dixie out of the dark um buy it wherever we you wrote it books. we wrote it like phonetically and we talked a lot about whether we should do that or not and i know some people think that's like cheesy or whatever but the reason we did that was <clears> so we were trying to do everything we could do to ensure that anyone who read the book read it in like our accents or whatever because it has a huge impact Which on is how wild. things we Sam. suggest everybody get the audio version if you are right. new to this. If you're going to get it, get the audio version because, yeah, that is very important. But, I, dude, I worry about that too. Like, what you brought this up earlier. I went back and reread some Downton Flabby just to read past <laughs> us hitting. And I was reading it and I was like, God damn it, we're fucking fire. Yeah. But then, like, I had the thought in some ways, I was like, I wonder if they read it like, the way I mean, you know what I mean? Voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like a regular voice. Right, like if you don't know me, I don't know if this hits, and that's right. a bad way to think. Well, that's why getting over hits. Yeah, that's true. Because then the people know you. Yeah, that's true. It does hit. Yeah, it does hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did y'all know that there is a place, and I know that Drew knows of this place, but there is a place one hour from downtown Los Angeles where it can snow up yeah. to 21 inches in a goddamn day. Is that where that you place stuck? is called Mount Baldy? And I know of it because I went there on my son's birthday and it snowed 21 inches and we got stuck on Mount Baldy for 11 and a half fucking hours with 500 other, you know, of the worst drivers Southern California has to offer in a bli a Southern California blizzard. I I didn't, I, literally, other than mainly when we were in that nor'easter in Buffalo on tour oh, that dude. time, other than maybe that, but even that, I'm not convinced, because I'm from the South. This is the most snow I've ever seen in my entire life. And the it was in, like, right at the los angeles area i never knew, maybe that's like common knowledge i never how, knew how many that feet was you say? even a thing it was Nearly 21 10. inches that day 21 inches so okay. almost two feet two when, when, feet of fucking snow when i was uh when i was in uh wyoming they had right. there was there was snow that was up to like the base of the fucking stop sign at one point. Now, granted, they'd like packed it all in here, but that's a fucking that's a that's an insane thing to see for someone like us, right? Who grew, who grew up with there's a snowflake. We're not going to school, exactly. But that's I don't, what I'm saying I know if you're from Minnesota the or something, that's that? not that much. But yeah, for me and it being here, yeah, that's a fucking lot of snow. I I, I had no idea. That's a crazy part to be in because the, the thing about Wyoming, like in a similar way, was that it would be that amount of snow and then the next day would just be like 60 for some reason. And then the next day it would snow. You know what I'm saying? Like it went back. But what, like, how high up is Mount Baldy? Oh, yeah. that's, it's like 7,200 feet or something like that. Wild. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's, real that's, what, that's how it. That's how that happens in Southern California, the places where it snows. It's because the mountains get high real yeah. fast. Right. Like they are steep and they get pretty high and they, so they can be like white caps. And I, I'd heard of like Big Bear. I know about Big Bear or like Lake Tahoe and places like that I'm aware of. But I didn't know I didn't know there was a place that close to Los Angeles that fucking snowed like that. It blew my mind and then ruined do you feel, our entire day do you, after it blew my mind. But do you feel like more story. of a Jeep owner now? Yes. You can lock him hot I, 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 was, I was about to say, like, I feel like every Jeep owner, like, you have to experience something like this for it to fully christen you into the club. The, the Jeep 
was a dream. Oh, just dream. driving was, by people in their Teslas. Yes, yes, people. Yeah, uh, the whole time we got out of there quicker than a lot of people did because of being in a Jeep, one hundred percent. But yeah, I've had that Jeep for four years and I ain't never took it off road or anything up until then. It was very well, I mean, much of a, course not. Fuck a fucking that. asphalt warrior or whatever. But uh, but it it came through that's the first time it was like okay well now i need this jeep to do some jeep shit and it right. jeeped all over it didn't have it, it had no I do problems hit. whatsoever is it four-wheel drive automatic or do you gotta lock the hubcaps like the old school no no you don't have to get out and lock the hubcaps i it's never had a new four-wheel drive but I, yeah. it always hit for me to lock the hubcaps it felt like you really you know, yeah, you're like a man's thing. job pardon me i gotta get out of my car and do a thing yeah yeah i've never experienced that uh, I don't know why it snows there. I mean, also, though, it don't rain here. So that's another thing that's weird about that. It's not just yeah, that it's cold that. enough to snow. Right. It doesn't rain here. Yeah, where's well, the is, that, is that like it gets trapped? Like the rain goes over our head but gets trapped in the mountains? No, it was raining here in Los Angeles that day, too, and raining okay. a lot. You know how, like, it doesn't rain often, but when it does, it rains a lot. Yeah. It was just yep. raining a lot in the area, and up there, because it was so high, it was under freezing, so that came down as snow, and it was a fucking straight up blizzard but uh yeah katie like when we planned it of course the mountain's always there and what they do is they put fake because katie told me because i was like hey i ain't got no i don't have any fucking snow gear none of us do we're from tennessee and we live in los right. angeles and she was like and she was like oh it's 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 gonna be like 54 degrees the snow is fake she's like that snow is fake it is most well, of the they time. have a they have a snow oh, mountain. right right that's okay. what i'm saying 90 percent of the time it is yeah. it's like the, they put fake snow out on the mountain you can like go tubing with the kids or skiing and shit like that but the snow was that is your fake. plan was that what you're going yes. to do yes how and much are the machines you reckon it was like 50 something degrees and katie told me that morning she's like you know it's gonna like actually snow today like for real snow and at first we were pumped we were like, oh, well, shit, yeah, we hit is. the jackpot because that's even better. The boys get to play in real snow, not thinking it would be a fucking, you know, snow apocalypse or whatever. Yeah. But because we knew it was going to snow, we went to a uh, big five or whatever and got some like, you know, snow overalls and some uh, snow boots and shit like like cheap ones. But still, we weren't up there in like jeans and shit and 21 inches of snow, thankfully. But uh, still we and everyone else were definitely woefully underprepared for the onslaught of shit. The other thing I'll say though, about that, like they showed it on the news that night we got back and Katie saw on Facebook that the LA news had covered it. They were like over a hundred drivers stranded on Mount Baldy and vicious snowstorm or whatever. First of all, it was easily three or 400 cars, like for sure. And but secondly, they ended that with saying, but not to worry, everyone, the CHP is working through the pro uh, problem and they're dedicated to make sure everyone gets off the mountain safe. CHP is California Highway Patrol. We saw one California Highway Patrolman a mile out of the mountain, past where the snow had already stopped, just sitting on the road. We met him coming out and we stopped and he was like, so how's it looking up there? <laughs> and this nice. is like 12 hours later and i was i was like uh it's looking really bad man i was like it's it's a whole thing and he was like oh so so pretty rough huh and i was like yeah don't and he, hit and they did yeah he was like yeah, pretty much he's like oh don't hit and and then we just <laughs> left like he didn't there and he's the only cop we saw and on the news they're talking about chp out there working diligently they weren't doing shit that was the other thing that kept blowing they my lied mind to the news that's the other thing that was blowing my mind the whole time. Again, dude, 12 hours we sat there. And the whole time I'm like, I'm like, fucking, where are the authority? Where is anyone like fire, any kind of emergency services of any kind? There was none, dude, none at all. All these people were just like on their fucking own, basically, uh, I don't know. That part was wild to me too. I know it's a very well, rare thing, but it's still like, it doesn't never happen. You know what I mean? Like it's not, they warned was it you Bishop be, or Benton's birthday. Benton's birthday. Did he still have fun? No, he did. Oh, man, I mean, he did to begin with, he was having a <laughs> right. great time, but then He's a show. It, you can't keep him encapsulated. It all got soured completely by what came after we were watching the, first spider-man mcu spider-man movie last night we've seen it before but we were just re-watching it last oh, night spider-man homecoming yeah and the part with the 
Staten Island ferry at the end mm-hmm. where it's like uh, about he's trying to keep it from sinking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Benton said, "What? How did he, he said something like, he said being on that ferry." would be almost as bad as getting stuck on Mount Baldy. And I was like, almost. As, I was like, Benton, you didn't die. I was like, those people are going to die if that ferry sinks. I was like, you were, you just sat in the they Jeep gotta for a long time. It's not That's that, it, not that, it's not comparable, you know? And he was like, he was like, okay, they're, it, that's like a little bit worse talking about the ferry is what he said. he's like that's a little bit worse than what that's happened a, to us that's amber's marital status stuck on mount baldy am i right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. do you remember like the I, first time i went there I, I said mount baldy or or what all my aunts want to do when they see a well-read show that's right <laughs> mount baldy. That's a good it's, one. it's funny you said it because as soon as he said mount baldy i was like I was like, one of us has made some sort of Mount Baldy joke before. And I mean, obviously it was about me. <laughs> yes. And my uh, aunts, because two of them have met you and I'm pretty sure wanted to fuck you. I mean, you'll have I that. I guarantee they did. Uh, oh, yeah. Another little side note about that. Uh, I told y'all this via text, but um, there's a Baldy in Salina. That's also where, I, where I'm from. There's Baldy in Clay County. That's also a like, you know, a hill it's like yeah. you know you have to you have to go up go up you going up baldy he went up baldy you have yeah. to go up baldy right yeah. so it's elevated yeah, but not a fucking mountain but that baldy is just like it's where like redneck high schoolers there's a mud hole up there so you go yeah. up there and you go mudding or you go up there to like smoke weed and fuck and stuff Hell you know? yeah right we had the like, sippy hole yeah and that's uh that's what baldy is for so like we had Aetna. where i'm from so i can't help but uh have that connotation with it the whole time it just seems like a it seems like a dirt it seems dirty to me is what yeah. i'm saying i know Even, what you, you know what well, i mean you like, go up there with and get a cabin and take the boys and let them tube and then when they go to sleep get high and fuck katie and take it yeah. back to your roots well yeah yeah i mean we'll hit we'll hit you got distracted by some i did i'm sorry i gotta it's okay it, hey it. Pumped it's up. okay because I have to go uh, do sound check to be on CNN. So yes, yes sir. Does make it. a hit show? I will. Uh, Don't make so. it hit. Also, parting thoughts: I've lost thirty pounds, motherfuckers. How about you? That's Congrats. awesome, baby. Three up, but but listen, would you? How much does it look like I've lost? Eight. In the face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You've pointed out before. You take the hat off and you slap your head. And you're like, look, that's bone. Don't He's like, hit. that ain't, that's not fat. I can't lose that. That's my skull. Don't hit. Well, this is what it is, baby. Everything about you mm, is exactly uh, the way that it should be. Well, skew. 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 Thank you all for listening yeah. to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Now tune in next week if you got nothing to do. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Good night and skew. They're the liberal rednecks, they like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck.